Hello and welcome everyone to Maverick Trading. Today we're going to take a look at level two quotes in the interactive brokers platform. So let me pull up IB and let's take a look together. So on your quote page when you have these various symbols and things. So as you select a stock you can come up here and from the trading tools you can choose a variety of different things and you'll see right here you have market depth level two. So if we click on that that will pull up a level two quote screen. And from here, we'll talk a little bit about what level two quotes are. First of all, in the markets, there is what they call the NBBO, National Best Bid and Offer. Bid and Offer, NBBO. What does that mean? Well, in a traditional quote, you will see the highest bidder, and the lowest seller, see the ask column, that's the offer. See the bid column, that's the bid or the buyer. Now I've got a midpoint column, let me not confuse you, I'll move that out of the way. I like a midpoint just to kind of say, okay, where's, if we meet in the middle, what's that price? But here you can see the buyers and the sellers. And so for Chevron, the highest bidder right this moment is 175.20. The lowest seller, okay, it's shifting because markets are open, but you can see lowest sell price, highest bid price. When does a transaction go through? See the last trade? Transactions are going through. They agreed upon that price, and so a trade goes through. Either a buyer needs to go to the seller, the seller needs to go to the buyer, or they meet in the middle. The truth is in the middle, so to speak, that basically says, okay, if we were to uh, split the bid-ask spread, and this is especially helpful if you're trading options and things. Let's say we were going to trade a Chevron call option or something. I'll just select one. Let's go j grab a June at the money, whatever. Okay, now you can see that the bid is 595. That's the highest bidder. 615 is the lowest offering or sell price, and it quotes me 605 as the midpoint. That's more of where fair value is. That's more of where I should be getting an execution. I don't want to pay full price, and when I sell, I don't want to collect the lowest price. I want to kind of meet other traders in the middle, and that's why liquidity is important. A lot of action, a lot of traders and activity makes it you, very helpful for you to get your executions. So what does level two do? Well, this is the NBBO that they quote you the best bid and the best offer, the national best bid and offer. That's what everyone sees on their quote screen. You see the highest buyer and the lowest seller. What you don't see though is level two. And level two is everyone that's lined up behind them. So if we look at Chevron and the stock is trading, you know, you can kind of see the, the highest, this is the NBBO, best bid, best offer, but you can also see who's lined up behind, right? You can see how what size there are and how tight they are. If there's a lack of liquidity there and it's really spread out, imagine you had a lot on the buy side and not very many on the sell side right here, you might say it's kind of getting skewed, but... That's tricky because especially in something as liquid as Chevron, I mean, there's just constant movement. So, you know, where I think level two could be maybe more useful, perhaps, would be if you were trading something less liquid. Let's say, um, you know, let's see if this has a little less liquidity on the back end. So the bid and, and ask, the highest... Well, there's there's a lot there. That's not really a good example. That would be a good example in the options market, but not on the stock side. Um, let's think. So we'll take something that's maybe a little uh, less traded. Let's just pull up something like this. Okay, stocks at one. See how there's 10 cents between bid and offer, and it'll be even more uh, spread out behind that. So we might be able to get a little sense that, okay, there's a few buyers there, and then it kind of jumps down. Here, you've got a lot of sellers lined up, all kind of lined up at these same general prices or what have you. You know, maybe there's a little bit more information 
I don't really use level two. It's more of like a day traders tool, I suppose, where you're trying to really figure out and get quick executions and so on. And day trading is the most difficult aspect of the markets. Back when I first started trading over 20 years ago, uh, one of my first professional platforms was this really cool program in the early 2000s called Realtick. And we thought Realtick was amazing. We had these level two quotes and so on. And we thought we were going to change the world because we could see, you know, bid and ask. And it wasn't as liquid. And there weren't as many, you know, bots and different things in there. So I think it was a little bit more useful. Right now, there's a lot of stuff that's hidden. You can do iceberg orders where you're hiding your size, but you've got bigger size there. The technology has evolved that this may not, what you're looking at here, frankly, may not be the truth. There may be a lot more sellers here that you can't see how big they are, but they're aggressively trying to sell and so on. So we always say price is truth. You know, really pay attention to the trend, to the price, to those things. But if level two is helpful, that kind of gives you a sense of how that works. Now, if we come in here, market depth trader level two, it has a little different look and feel. You'll notice two different level two screens. Here you've got the same stock. It color codes it a little bit to kind of differentiate from different things as far as what's happening. Uh, if it's a down tick, it will turn red. If it's an up tick, it will turn green. And if it's a sideways tick, it will be blue. What, it, what does that mean exactly? Well, if you look at these prices, watch. If that stays at 166.56, you know, that here you've got the highest bidder for that exchange. Okay, that's in the blue. And then you can see the different colors and whatnot and where they're changing and evolving. And so you've got the highest there, you've got the second highest here, and it's kind of changing spots and changing locations. So you can get a little sense of whether these are going up or down in terms of bid and offers. Um, if you really started to see a lot of green, well, maybe they're aggressively kind of pumping up the bid. If you see a lot of red or something, or even over here, if there's a lot of red, well, they're kind of dropping those bid prices. They're, they're going backwards. So green is up, red is down, right? It's kind of, is it going bullish or bearish, so to speak? Green is more of a bullish move, prices going up. Red is more of a bearish move, prices going down. See all these at 166.60 now, that's the highest bid. And so they're all in that blue. And it will tell you the exchange. So if you are routing your order, let's say we were going to place a trade here, we could actually route our order to various exchanges. Interactive Brokers has a smart routing technology. So when you come in and place a buy order, you'll notice it says smart routed. But if you wanted to click here, you could actually route towards any exchange of your choosing. So if you really saw that, hey, Island is where I want to go, well, you could change the routing process. The nice thing about the smart router is it's, well, it's as it suggests, it's a smart routing technology that Interactive Brokers has that's basically going to try to route your order to the very best exchange. And so it's not just targeting one exchange. It's saying, hey, get me to the best exchange, get me to the best price possible. Now, let's talk about level two where I think it's the very most useful. Like, so we trade options. And in the options market, look, you can use level two. And it's very, very effective in giving you some information here because first of all, the prices aren't changing quite so rapidly. I mean, trying to kind of click on those prices on the stock is very difficult. But here we can actually see that there is a wealth of buyers at $6 for that option huge size and there are quite a a few sellers at 620 not at 615 but now all of a sudden looking at level 2 I really get a sense of the market now if I'm aggressive maybe if I'm a buyer I just have to accept 615 or you know maybe I start at 610 or something but I know that there's only one guy out there at one size that might vanish there's a lot of people at 620, so I don't need to be in a rush to pay 620, but you know, I'm, I might try to get this person to come and meet me at 610, 
But if I really, really want in and I put out a buy order at 610 and he's not biting, maybe I just jump on that at 615 and see if some others will, will come there. Now, that's only one contract. That's a very small size, but it kind of speaks to the depth of it. So knowing how many people are there, how wide, if we were to look at the midpoint on this, see, it says the midpoint is 610. But the midpoint, that's a little bit misleading because there's only one guy right there at 615. It's kind of like the midpoint is a little bit more like, you know, 6... 12 or 613 you know there's there's a if you were to take the difference between where most of the sellers are and most of the buyers are the midpoint's like 612 613 so paying 615 is maybe a couple of pennies too much but it's pretty close to the midpoint given the depth of the market we can do this with any option now again let me go back to that one that i was saying is going to be le uh, far less liquid in the options market and you're about to see it in action let's just pull up one of these as an example you'll notice wider bid ask spreads based on the contract size and you'll just see less less of everything so if you happen to see something out here um, notice there's only, I mean, there's a lot at 105 and a lot at 120. If you're trying to get an order execution, there's just fewer traders altogether on this whole entire thing. So putting an order out to try to pay, you know, 110 for this call option, it's going to be hard to get somebody over here to come to you unless the price moves. And it really speaks to the liquidity of the asset. So we love trading very liquid options, of course. And if you look at it, you know, if you go out and trade something that has a lot of liquidity, there's just going to be, it's going to be so much easier to get executions. First of all, the NBBO, National Best Bid and Offer, the highest bidder and the lowest seller, they're all closer together. In addition, if you look at the depth behind, there are a ton of size and prices, even at you know one penny increments, there's a lot spread out. So the the ability to get executions in a timely manner at good prices are just vastly improved. The level two quote screens really tell a lot of information about whether or not you should be trading this asset in the first place. You know what type of liquidity you're dealing with and then kind of where people are located. Hope you've enjoyed this video, learned a little bit more about level two, about NBBO, about price executions, and all these important factors when you are trading the financial markets. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.